invented. Yeah, I dated that same big TikToker and it's about time I come out and tell you guys what a terrible person he is and stop supporting him. I just want to say that I've been in entertainment for 11 years. A lot of you already know who I am and I've never spoken publicly about anyone that I've dated. But I have to do this one because it involves lying, manipulation, STDs, putting women at risk, and racism and not to mention misogyny. Reed and I met six months ago in August, but we only started dating the last two months. We broke up two weeks ago. He dumped me because he said I had trust issues. But his whole career, he's always said that he's a good man, uh, loyalty, integrity, morals, honor, all that. He preached it so hard, especially in the last two weeks since our breakup. Three days ago, he was on Instagram Live, sad, singing sad songs that he wrote about our breakup, being all heartbroken and disheveled. Well, tonight we went to a drive-in theater with all of our TikTok friends and he happened to show up. By some miracle of God, my car gets parked right behind his. But when I pulled up, I saw a second shadow in his passenger seat. Part two coming. Part two. The whole TikTok crew went over to greet him and they were shocked to see that there was a girl in the passenger seat. And we were all just like, what the hell? It's only been two weeks. That's so messed up. It's disrespectful. One of the guys didn't know that we were dating and mentioned that Reed had said that he met this girl on a dating app. And we were shocked because since day one, he's always preached against dating apps to me, to everyone on the internet, to our whole crew. When I first entered the dating scene, dating apps existed, but I didn't use them. Like, it promotes weak men, in a way. This is when the hypocrisy and the lies started coming out. I hopped on Hinge and found him within 10 minutes. Then I was sent a TikTok that his ex-girlfriend made, referred to part one, that's a video that I stitched. I remember him briefly mentioning this TikTok saying it was just a crazy girl he hooked up with a couple times and she got obsessed with him and tried to cancel him. But something didn't seem right so I messaged her on Instagram. I told her how he ghosted me and how he didn't believe in dating apps. Look what she said, pause to read. He met her on Hinge. He met another girl that he cheated on her with on Hinge. And then I get into a group chat with the both of them. And this is when things get crazy. Part three coming. Part three. Now we're in this group chat and we're comparing timelines and lies. After meeting Michelle, he decides to dump Paula, saying that his grandmother might have cancer. She didn't. After Michelle found that TikTok, she dumped Reed. The next few months, he starts working with a very big TikToker from the Philippines. You guys know who she is? I'll just call her Ashley. He and Ashley start liking each other and they start seriously talking. So about three months have passed and now we're in August. Reed randomly shows up to Michelle's place with a promise ring, asking her for a second chance, and she takes him back. So now he has a girlfriend, he's talking to Ashley, and then he meets me. Now we didn't date in August, but our flirty on-camera chemistry made viral videos like the Yakuza series. Michelle was really concerned because she was afraid that he would cheat on her with me. But he told her that I knew that he had a girlfriend. I didn't. He never said anything. But now that he has me, he doesn't need Ashley's following anymore, so he ended it with her, but saying, let's not close the book yet. So let's add Clout Chaser to his list of sins. Part 4 coming up. Part 4. Some of you are saying I'm just mad because I got dumped. I'm a big girl. I've been through breakups before. I can handle it. If this just involved me, it's fine. I can handle it. But this involves the people that I work with, the people I care about, and the mental and physical health of the girls he takes advantage of. So let me continue. So about a month after he shows up at her door, Michelle dumps him because of trust issues, of course. Now this is where my part comes in. Reed and I start dating around the end of December until the end of February. For the most part, it was fine, but for some reason, I couldn't bring myself to fully trust him. Nothing too crazy happened in our relationship. It wasn't until after we broke up that things started getting really crazy. One of our mutual friends told me that he once admitted to sleeping with over 100 women. And so I freaked out and I went to go get a full STD screening. And a few days later, the doctor's office calls me and tells me that I need to come in to see my test results. Part five is coming. Part five? I'm gonna be honest, I didn't wanna go public with this before because, you know, people break up, they cheat, they lie, whatever, it happens. But what happened next really pushed me over the edge. I'm now rushing to a doctor's office, seething with rage, and I couldn't see straight. Chlamydia. He gave me chlamydia. Curable, thank God. But it gets worse. I remember a few months ago he was getting cancelled for being misogynist by an account called You're Funny Uni. So I reached out to her and she puts me in touch with another girl that she knows Reed did wrong. Let's call her Penny. Penny told me that she and Reed hooked up from November to December and he treated her like a piece of meat and was pretty disrespectful. After Penny cut him off, she went and got tested and tested positive for chlamydia, so she calls him to let him know. This was January. I was with him in January. He responds with this, pause to read it. So he knew. He knew he had chlamydia. And he still slept with me and never said a single word about it. Part 6 coming. Part 6. Let's go into some details. 60 seconds isn't enough for me to tell you how many lies he's told, so I uploaded a Google Drive with all the screenshots to my Twitter. Now, on to the other stuff. 
Listen, I grew up in Xbox lobbies, so I don't really get bothered by what people say, but I've had to check him so many times for saying the N-word, hard R, a lot. In fact, multiple people had to check him. He also always talked about how women are lesser and how fat people are disgusting. And honestly, I let these jokes slide because, like I said, I have thick skin and I don't really care, but I really, truly feel like he believes these things that he says. But he kind of covers it up as a joke. In screenshots, you'll see how multiple people confirm that he says these things. And a part of me was hoping that I could guide him to do better. Part 7, coming up. Alright, part 7, let's wrap this up. Reed has always been so good at manipulating people into believing that it was their fault that he left. He's fooled all of his Mochoi fans into thinking he's this great, righteous man with morals, integrity, and honor. And our friends believed it. He always told people that his biggest deal breaker was liars, because he hates liars. Then I realized he was just projecting. He's also a huge hypocrite. He told his ex that she was not allowed to drink with other men, but he was on my stream drinking with me while he was dating her. He also told his exes what they can and cannot wear and what pictures they can post because it couldn't be too revealing. I get that we as creators have online personas that we put up, but you cannot preach so hard about being righteous while turning around and hurting the women that gave you this platform. You use your numbers to meet women, take advantage of them, and then toss them to the side. You just will have to run into the wrong one this time. Reed, I know you're watching this right now, and I just want to let you know that instead of going around the internet trying to tell everyone that you're a good man, actually do it for once. Also, it's past your bedtime, Chucky. Part 8, apparently. I know I sounded smug and cheeky in the last video because I thought I said all that I had to say and that was it. But it's 5 in the morning and the messages haven't stopped. Multiple women have been messaging me about their encounters with Reed Choi. It's become emotionally draining to see how many people he's affected. We can add a total of 3 more people to his roster in August. But the stories are getting worse and worse and I don't know where I'm supposed to go with these anymore. This one's a 19 year old girl. He always told us that he didn't have any sort of social media before TikTok. And he said that he never knew much about technology and never really cared. We made fun of him for it and called him an old man. Also not true. He used to go by his real name, Sam Choi, and was on some stuff and had a small podcast or whatever. We don't know who he really is, but we do know that he does not deserve a platform because he'll keep abusing women. I don't know if there's going to be a next part, but everything will be uploaded to the drive on my Twitter. It's about 6.30 a.m. and I just wanted to say that. I didn't enjoy any of that. I mulled over it for about two days trying to figure out if it was worth posting about. But the whole like STD thing really pushed it over the edge and I feel like I had to do it. But I didn't enjoy any of it at all. Because it felt like shooting one of your own in the back of the head. While going through all of our old stuff, I found myself wondering what was real and what was not. And I'm not gonna lie. it kind of mess with my head a little bit because a lot of it was very personal like the painting he got of me and my dad I don't know if it was real or not now I'm not saying that I'm heartbroken because I'm not I'm not saying that I still have feelings because I don't I'm just very curious I guess to know what was real eh, oh well Shogunai